Hi everyone, JH Champagne here back with another writing tip video. So today I want to talk to you about writing with your five senses. It's a really great strategy and technique when you are trying to add detail to your writing and you find yourself a little stuck. You really aren't sure what to do. Maybe you think you've added a lot of detail, but it's just not enough. It's missing something. Going through your five senses one at a time, which is what we're going to do right now, will really help you focus in on the colors and textures and sounds surrounding your characters in your story that can really bring things to a whole new level of vividness. So the first one I want to talk about is probably the easiest. It's the one we tend to focus on most in our writing and that's sight. What do they see? What is in front of your characters? What's surrounding your characters? What do they see in front of them and how do they react to it? So for the, for the sake of today, let's say that we've got two characters, characters that are at a carnival. So what do they see? Is it bright and shiny? Are the colors dull? What's around them? Do they see the games? And what does that look like and how do they react to it? Do they see rides? Do they want to go to that? Do they not want to go to that? How do they affect it? How does that affect them? If they get to a Ferris wheel and it's bright and shiny and red and beautiful, is that different than it being creaky and that's a little more sound, we'll get to that, but if it's rusted and a little run down and the letters and the sign are peeling or look a little dated and it makes them think that, that it's old, how does that affect your story? Because from those two moments, two very different things could happen. They could have a whole conversation about the fact that it's a beautiful carnival and they're having so much fun, or they could very easily get into why is all of this so run down? And do they argue about that? Do they discuss that? What then happens? All of that can get pulled out of simply focusing on sight. So the second one I want to talk about is sound. It's almost as easy. Sometimes you have to dig into it a little bit more. Yes, the easiest part of that is conversations. What voices do they hear? Who's speaking to them? Who do they speak to? What conversations do they have? But you can dig into it a little bit deeper. What tone of voice is somebody using with them? How do they hear that? How do they react to that, especially when maybe they hear a tone of voice that the, or hear an inflection or an emotion that the speaker really wasn't intending to convey and there's this moment of confusion. How does that affect the story and change things? The other thing that they could think about in the midst of this carnival idea, picture all of the sounds of a carnival, the dinging bells of the, you know, heavy mallet game that we've all seen pictures of or some of us have played and not done well. <laughs> we'll leave that there. But the the popping of a balloon in the dart games, how does that affect the characters? What what do they hear around them and how do they respond to it? Is the pop of that balloon from the dart distracting? Does it startle them? Or does it say, oh, let's go play that. And then what happens after that? Do they continue the conversation? Do they do that? Do they not? That can really affect where your story goes, even in that small little scene. And focusing on sound is, is what got you there, is going to help color your experiences for your characters and really so then the experiences for your reader. Again, to go back to that creaky Ferris wheel that's also rusted, how does that change things? Do they hear it creak? Do they listen for it to creak and don't hear it? And that surprises them. Focusing on sound is going to get you there. So the third one I want to talk about is touch. Those tactile things all around your characters that are going to also affect them. The walkway at your carnival. What's it made of? Let's go back to sight for a minute. What is it? Is it sand, wood, straw, boardwalk, um, concrete? All of those things, if you can you know, start out with what do they see? They see a boardwalk. Go into sound. Do they hear the clip clopping of one of the characters flip flops on it? And then touch. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it hard? Is it 
soft? Do they win a, a big stuffed animal at one of the carnival games and then hold it? And then what is that soft, fuzzy animal that they're now carrying around with them feel like? Really get into that. What what your characters feel, again, is going to translate into what your readers feel as well. Is it raining? How wet does that feel? What does it feel like when your clothes are soaking wet when you've been at a carnival in the rain? What does that do to your characters? And again, what does that do? What doing it to your characters, what does that do to your readers? And to really dig into touch, those tactile things that sound really difficult to convey, but if you can do it beautifully and really make those textures jump off the page, it can be something absolutely amazing. And again, go through these one at a time. It's the best way to really dig into all of them. So now smell is our fourth one. And again, the same ideas that we've been doing with all of this. What do they smell at this carnival? And again, you can do this with any setting you're writing in in your own work right now. So at the carnival, do they smell? There's some things that are easy to think of. Do they smell cotton candy, hot dogs, you know, all of those sorts of things that the, you know, food wise are really easy to think about in almost any set setting, but smell and taste when we get to it in just a second, does not have to be limited to food. If it's a straw area filled with animals, let's say this um, carnival is a little more of a county fair and there's animals there, what does that smell like for your characters and thus for your readers? Do they smell the straw? Do they smell the animals? Do they smell the manure of the animals? Do they smell the car exhaust when they get to the parking lot? What does that do to your characters? And how can that really just add vividness to your setting in all of your writing is to think about those little details, those things you don't even notice to, again, get away from the carnival for a minute. If we're at, say, the ocean, does the air smell salty? Can you add that in into your writing and really add that layer of detail to your story to make things much more beautiful? So the last one is taste. And again, I'll say, say this again, the same thing with... Uh, smell, you do not have to limit that to food. Same thing with the, with the ocean. If the air is going to smell salty, does it taste salty? Just the, do you get water in your mouth? At the carnival, that sort of sawdusty smell, depending on, you know, the area and the flooring and just what the carnival is set on, does it have kind of a sawdusty smell and texture? And you can add, you can do a lot with, with just the that kind of overhanging dusty air. What does that taste like? Yes, you can get into food. Do they have a very sweet moment of sharing ice cream? What there there's actually a um a scene in my book Phoenix Morrow where one of the biggest moments of growth between two particular characters happen when they're simply getting um, shaved ice and sort of the conversation they have over that. And yes, that centers around food, but you can really get into the flavors and what they're doing. And it's one of my, it's a little part of the book, but it's one of my favorites. But the taste side of it, there's actually a lot that you can do with it. If it's, you know, a metallic taste in the air surrounding the rides, is it kind of an oily smell that puts a bad taste in their mouth again in the parking lot when they're, when they're smelling the exhaust as well and hearing the engines and seeing the rusty cars. And you can put all of it together and really add all of that detail. So I hope that all of this has been helpful for you to really go through and again, do this one at a time with your senses. Sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste, go through all of them in your writing and add those details. So until next time, thank you guys very much for spending this time with me and I look forward to seeing you soon.